business series, we are meeting someone who is quite well known in Indian real estate, not just nationally, but in the national market as well. His name is in a legend, he's an icon, and he is quite well known, especially in Mumbai city. Yes, you have guessed it right. It's Mr. Niranjan Hiranamma. Thank you, sir, for joining today on Let's Talk Business Series by Reality NXT. Pleasure to meet you. So, sir, before we begin, before I ask you wonderful questions on the real estate front, I want to know how 2022 year has been for you personally and professionally. Well, uh, as a person, uh, I would say it's been a great year. And uh, we look forward to years like this, where you have the COVID behind you, where you have all the issues uh, not really bothering you. The usual roller coaster of uh, economics, of course, continues to uh, harass everybody who's in the world of business. So if you have the Russian-Ukraine war and if yeah. the Reserve Bank governor wants to increase interest rates, those are challenges which are the normal ones which really you look out. Surprising, the story goes that uh, the real estate market actually went up this year by almost 20%. Yeah. And if you look at it from that perspective, it's been a fantastic year. Number two, if you also look at the uh, housing finance companies, all of them have grown more than 20%. Mm. So overall, if you look at through the country, through our companies, or the eyes of anybody who's in the real estate business, I think it's been a wonderful year. So no, no complaints about uh, 2022 calendar year and uh, looking positively to the next year. Challenges? Of course, plenty. In the sense, the governor again last yeah. week uh, has increased by 25 basis points and still threatens to increase it further. Though I don't think it's a good idea to do so. But uh, having said that, we do see uh, positive indications in the marketplace where the demand for real estate continues to grow. So I think it's a very positive one. And personally, sir? Uh, personally, I had a small medical incident for my year. Uh, so that was a little bit of a problem, but it's restored. So it's been fantastic. Uh, even that way, I'm fine. And uh, I had a great year. Did some running in the marathon. So yeah, that's that, wonderful. That was nice. and. Uh, all in all, uh, I think uh, I couldn't have asked for better years. So the new year 2023 has started and everyone makes a resolution. I'm not going to ask professional resolution of yours. What is your personal resolution for this year? Anyway, let me surprise you. <laughs> uh, I also run a hospital. Okay. So last year, my resolution was to start uh, transplants. So we started uh, liver and kidney transplants. Wow. 2023, okay. we'll see heart transplant, and maybe next year we'll see lung transplants. In our We're also going to focus this year on diabetes. Nice. To eliminate diabetes in India. Wow. So that's another target. So that's the medical side. On the education side, I run 14 colleges, uh, six schools, and a uh, university. Plan to expand that. Uh, and. Uh, started a school of real estate two years ago yeah. which is ex doing extremely well so all this is uh, been, uh, extracurricular activities which have been fun to do it well uh, that's wonderful to know and yes. especially you're saying eliminating diabetes completely that's a wonderful news yes so sir tell me i have read about this in all your interviews that you have said your biggest competition is you you make sure that your yesterday Niranjan Hiranandani is different from today's Niranjan Hiranandani. And when I say that, I've noticed in every event you go to or any, any interview you do, you don't repeat yourself. So how do you motivate yourself and how do you every day come up with new uh, you know, information to add on, to add value of knowledge to any other event you go to? Well, uh, you know, uh, it's not difficult actually. The secret is, uh, I don't worry about the quantum of improvement, but I always improve. Mm. Now tell me, can you not improve 1% on anything that you do? Definitely, Whether you're making yeah. a lecture, or you're writing an article, or you're making a speech, or you're interacting with people, or making love. Mm. Can you not improve your love making by 1%? You can. So I always see to it that mm. if you make an improvement of 1% every single day of your life, 
at the end of the day, you will have 365 percent improvement. And if you have uh, 40 years of working life, and I've been trying to improve myself every day. I was lecturing to some students the other day, and uh, and I was telling them that you have to do one percent improvement. And I asked them, really, I I lectured to you two years ago. Don't you think my speech is better today than it was two years ago? And they all uh, got up and said, yeah, I think it was. So if you really make it a habit to do that, uh, I don't think you cannot improve. The question is, I want to be better than you. That's always a problem. Because you may be something else, a different uh, species completely, and you may be much better than me. But if I keep on improving myself, that one day I may overtake you, I may not overtake you, but I only bother about myself. So I neither feel jealous of you, nor do I feel troubled by somebody else who is in my competition. I just focus on myself. I look in the mirror and say, Niranjan, are you better today than you were yesterday? And I'm happy if I can do that. That's great. So there's a quote, sir, that do what you love and rest of the days in your life won't be work for you, right? But how do you balance that? Like I've seen all entrepreneurs following this quote, but let's be real about the fact we have a family life, we have responsibilities, we have children. So how do you balance that work and your personal life? Yeah, so it's a very nice question. And the answer again is equally simple. The point is, I don't do anything which I don't love. So if I'm speaking to you, I love to speak and put across points of view, plus to do it. Uh, the other day, again, when I was speaking to students, mm. I gave a speech, it was for 45 minutes. And uh, after 20 minutes, I stopped speaking. And I said, uh, you know, uh, I love interacting with people rather than giving monologues. Mm. And we started a question answer session. And we went on for an hour instead of 45 minutes. And I believe you me, the dialogue that I went through rather than just the speech, I enjoyed it thoroughly. And the students did too. So, you know, uh, you kind of get a joy out of what you want to do. And sometimes it looks difficult. But yeah. in reality, if you really uh, make a fun out of Look at the buildings we are making here, or yeah. we made over here. Every building we made is a joy. You know, uh, so I don't look at the, my working life as a working life as distinguished of living life. So people say, I'm working, then you say, I'm resting and I'm enjoying and I'm having a ball. I'm having a ball through the day. <laughs> so if you're enjoying the whole day that you're working, it's fantastic. You, you neither get uh, tired nor you have, you're full of energy all the time. So as you mentioned to our students, you must have interacted with them recently. You must have known that there's a new wave of entrepreneurship coming in. Every uh, student or every youngster wants to have their own startup. But to build or uh, embark upon such journey, everyone goes through a certain turmoil. So how do you, uh, what advice would you give to these youngsters not to give up easily? Because it's a tough road, way ahead in terms of starting your own business. And a lot of youngsters are embarking on this. So an entrepreneur or a startup has to see that he falls down 50 times. Uh, and if you're not able to do that, then you can't be an entrepreneur. It's because uh, entrepreneurship is about uh, successes, but it is more about failures. The only thing is that the world sees the successes and not the failures. True. So if you look at the film actors, for instance, uh, the biggest success in the film industry is Amitabh Bachchan. Yeah. But ask him what happened to him 10 years, 12 years ago. And he, he, he had failed. He was a financial failure because he had invested into something which didn't work. And he went on to TV simply because he needed the money. He wanted to make the money. Yeah. Now, can you imagine Amitabh Bachchan? Wow. The greatest guy in the film industry. And he not being successful, he being failure. And if you really talk to him on a one-to-one, -one, you realize that all these guys who are successful have failed many times. The only difference being that they're willing to fall and they're willing to get up and they're willing to start again and they're willing to live life and then make it. So it's, it doesn't matter how many times you failed at all. 
So anybody who wants to be a startup, who wants to be an entrepreneur, cannot say that I will not fall. Yeah, true. Agreed. So, sir, you have seen Bombay becoming from Bombay to Mumbai, Amchi Mumbai, and you have seen the city from your early youthful age till now. What is the, about the city you love the most? And what is about the city you have missed that is not there anymore? What is your take on this? So, the first part is that I love Mumbai because I love the people of Mumbai. I think it's a different type of character of people who live in Mumbai and live in the best of the world. People look up to you not because you are what you are, but what you have done. So people look up to you as a professional, as a person who's delivered goods, uh, who has integrity, who has honesty. In other places, uh, it's about caste and religion and position. Mumbai is not like that. Uh, in other places, uh, you've got to be a politician or somebody or a bureaucrat in order to make it. Uh, in Mumbai, it's not. Uh, any person uh, who can be uh, a Pani Puri wala can become famous, uh, a Pan wala can become famous, and of course, Mr. Mukesh Ambani can become famous. So, you have the whole range of people from small to big. Uh, you have good lawyers, you have good doctors, great doctors, great lawyers. You have uh, actors, film stars, workers of all kinds, professionals, IT people, uh, people in the media and stuff like that and you have great people everywhere and people look up to you no matter what your profession is so and uh, i think that is mumbai the people of mumbai and that part of the whole thing is there doesn't exist anywhere in india what you have in mumbai so that i love the most and uh, of course uh, over a period of years we have seen the, the good part of mumbai the bad part of mumbai and i'm glad to tell you that I have made some part of the good parts of Mumbai, <laughs> so I'm happy to do yeah. so. So that's it. And uh, we work towards to see how we can improve Mumbai, mm. both in terms of the physical part of it, the uh, infrastructure part of it, the education, the health. All this I've been a big part of. So I think it's thrilling to see and interact with people at that level and have that. I think it's. Amchi Mumbai is the best. True, I agree. So, sir, I want to know, as a person, from your point of view, are you a spiritual person? It depends on what you mean by spirituality. So, I'll give you one definition of spirituality, mm. and that is I'm a trustee of three temples. So, I am spiritual in that sense. Of the but I'm not ritualistic. So, I don't believe that I will spend 20 hours in prayer or things like that. Mm. I do believe in God, and I do believe in Krishna. I believe uh, I'm a good follower of his and uh, also the fact that uh, I believe in honesty, integrity, loving people, respecting people and others. And I think that is religion. And I do believe that your karma will decide your future. So I think I do believe in that. But am I very ritualistic? No. <laughs> so one last I want to know about your personal self. If you have to define yourself. How were you in your early teens and till now? What has been the drastic? Of course, everyone changed around with the time. Everyone evolved with the knowledge. But as a person who was like 22 year old till now, what is that one thing you have kept intact? And of course, how would you define yourself? So you're talking about 50 years of my career. So yeah. right from 22 to now being 72. I think every five to 10 years, there's been a lot of difference. Uh, the aspiration, I was a first generation businessman, so with 2 lakhs of rupees and investments into uh, textiles and uh, real estate, really didn't see any future, didn't ever think that I would grow to the extent that I have. Uh, the 30s was very challenging. Uh, I didn't have a minute. I started work at 7 in the morning, finished at 10, 11 at night. Uh, never had any distractions. Uh, never I worked on Sundays and everything to bring up the hard part of life. And uh, then in the next 10 years, uh, participated in associations, the Maharashtra Chamber of Housing Industry, the Indian Merchant Chamber, ASOCHAM. We created the National Housing Policy for India, worked on various projects, brought up my children, who got into the world of business in a different way than I do. Uh, 
next few years I worked on charitable work as much as I did in my real estate work, uh, in schools, in colleges, in hospitals, on skill development, uh, so, and I continue to do that. So I think uh, every 10 years of my life really has uh, seen a huge difference. And uh, even now I think uh, uh, it keeps on changing, uh, but it's become more and more beautiful by the decay. Mm. And uh, I've learned how to give back to society much more. And in the last 20 years at least, I think I've done a huge amount according to me. And, uh, great deal of satisfaction in doing my business still, yeah. but uh, that's an equal part of the life, maybe less, but uh, it's very, very exciting.